Last July, actress Bea Alonzo posted that some of her fan pages were offered money to sell their accounts. In the days that followed, other ABS-CBN actors came forward with similar messages sent to them by their supporters. After Alonzo posted, some pointed out that a number of Facebook pages of political figures began as celebrity fan pages, and vice versa. This goes against Facebook's policy which states that, Name changes and merges must not result in a misleading or unintended connection and must not substantially change the page's subject matter. Experts are saying that this suspicious activity may be used for hacking information. It could also be part of political campaign strategies ahead of 2022. The practice of buying social media capital is not uncommon in the Philippine social media landscape. Let's look at our history with suspicious online activity in the country. Since the 2016 elections, Facebook became an appealing platform for candidates because its system could target very specific individuals based on their profiles and for very low prices. Two years ago, whistleblowers from now-defunct political consulting firm Cambridge Analytica revealed that they had improperly accessed data for millions of users in the Philippines, the second largest source after the United States. This data was then used to target users for political campaigns. According to the whistleblowers, the Philippines is the perfect petri dish. Questionable rule of law, high social media usage, and corrupt politicians. The discursive nature of social media also makes for a right battleground for supporters and fans alike. Anyone can create a social media fan page. Oftentimes, fans create them on Twitter or Facebook to post regular updates and to fawn over celebrities or public figures. Fan pages garner hundreds of thousands of likes and followers, meaning they hold a certain degree of influence in the online space. A single click on the share button enables you to broadcast a piece of news to hundreds of friends or followers, regardless of whether or not this information is factual. In the United States, fandoms have recently been making headlines for involving themselves in politics. K-pop stands, in particular, have been using the organization strategies they would normally use to stream their favorite songs and music videos into more political purposes, such as disrupting police apps during the BLM protests or Trump saying rallies. BTS fans should do this, but what I'm absolutely saying is that they should absolutely go and stand that website and take up all the tickets so that you don't have any people on the right. While these efforts have been lauded online, some are wary of what it means for these fandoms to encroach on a political space. Here in the Philippines, it's not uncommon to see these fan pages operate in the same way. If admins of these pages are capable of rallying numbers to stream or raise money to buy a birthday gift for their favorites, they too are able to use this kind of influence for raising money for charity and for fighting trolls. Troll farms are one example of a digital tool allegedly being used by politicians to further their political agenda, led by PR, advertising, marketing, and media experts. These troll farms make use of fake social media accounts. They are created to boost the popularity of one candidate and or to create smear campaigns of the opposition. Fake accounts used by trolls are manufactured online personas. Think social media AUs but for nefarious purposes. Some fake personas assume the form of a fan, latching onto movements with big fandoms such as K-pop in order to gain traction. Another kind of fake account gained notoriety after the anti-terror bill was filed in Congress. Hundreds of Filipinos, many of whom students, reported duplicates of their Facebook accounts. Many suspect that these account doppelgangers could be used as a means to frame individuals for cyber crimes. In response to the scandal, Facebook took down hundreds of pages, groups, and accounts to link to troll farms, including a so-called popular news site, Trending News Portal. Some of these were linked to Nick Cabonada, who was in charge of President Rodrigo Duterte's social media strategy during the 2016 presidential campaign. The social media analysis company Graphica, which helped Facebook archive this content before its removal, said these pages glorify Duterte's war on drugs, a campaign that human rights groups say has resulted in the deaths of more than 20,000 people in police raids and extrajudicial slayings. So the Philippines uh, is one of those countries where you've got a lot of people online and a lot of people using social, social media. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when, you've go 
when you've got that kind of setup, it's an ideal target. Are they weaponizing fandom? How safe are online spaces? We may find out come the next election season. Until then, stay vigilant and report on any suspicious cyber activity you encounter.